So song form and song structure is often overlooked during the songwriting process because, well, it's just not very fun or exciting to think about compared to, say, making awesome melodies or coming up with catchy hooks or choruses or writing profound and meaningful lyrics. For a lot of people, it comes naturally as well, so it's not something that they have to think about or they have enough experience to automatically know what works and what doesn't. But if you're not one of those people, not having a well-defined song form or structure can really make or break your song. So today we'll take a look at some common song forms, see how they work, but more importantly, see why they work. So if you're a beginner songwriter and you're wondering what song form to choose and you just want to get into it right away, well, my recommendation is simple. Just stick to the basic song structure that's worked for many people, and that is the following. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. If you want to spice things up, you can add an intro, an outro, use transitions such as pre-choruses and post-choruses. Keeping certain elements in while taking some out can also give you some nice variety. If you want to take it even further by, say, completely moving one section to another part of the song, like taking the bridge and putting it right after the first chorus, that could work as well. After all, this is what Kobe Calais and Jason Mraz did in their song, Lucky. What if, instead of starting with the verse, you start with the chorus? We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. There are plenty of examples of songs that do this as well. I mean, you can pretty much do whatever you want, right? Mm. Well, not quite. Being creative is always good, but there's a limit to what you can do with a song form before it starts hurting your song. There's a reason why you don't ever see something like two verses in a row followed by two choruses in a row, or a song without a chorus, or a song that's just a chorus repeated over and over again. To understand why certain song forms work and others don't, we really have to try to figure out what the ultimate purpose of those sections are. In virtually every song put out in the last 80 years, you'll always have these two sections, the verse and the chorus. The verse is musically and dynamically less involved. It's usually less melodic, using only a couple notes. It's sung at a softer volume and at a lower register, and the lyrics are pretty much there just to tell the story. The chorus, on the other hand, is the dynamic climax of the song. It has a catchy and memorable melody. It's usually sung at a louder volume and at a higher register, and the lyrics use less words and favor repetition over anything else. There's a sharp and distinct difference between these two sections, and it's this contrast that makes them so important. This is because good form and song structure essentially boils down to one concept, tension and release. A good piece of music needs to create tension and then resolve it in order to create that drama that gives music its emotional impact. From a structural point of view, songs achieve this by alternating between the verse and the chorus. The verse creates tension, and the chorus releases that tension. It may be strange to think of tension as a desirable thing, but it might help to compare song form to a movie plot. Imagine a movie without a conflict or a problem that needs a solution. That would make for a pretty terrible story and a boring movie. Or how about a movie with a conflict but no resolution? A movie without conflict or resolution would leave the audience feeling uneasy and unsatisfied at the end. So that's all well and good, but then what's the point of the bridge? If the verse chorus combo is so effective, why do we even need that third element? What purpose does it serve? Well, this is a valid point, and it's the reason why some songs don't even have a bridge at all. But if a bridge is there, it does a really good job of breaking up the monotony of what would otherwise be a boring and predictable verse-chorus-verse-chorus pattern. Equally as important is the length of each section. Playing around with the length can help drive the momentum forward and keep the listener engaged by helping you emphasize certain sections while de-emphasizing others. Some common tactics that work well include keeping the intro short, experimenting with a second verse that's half the length of the first, keeping the bridge short, and doubling the last chorus to emphasize the best part of the song, 
The fact is, attention spans are getting shorter and shorter, so cutting back on some sections to help you get to the hook or the chorus faster is usually a good idea. It's not uncommon nowadays to see choruses being used as intros to hook the listener right from the start. Louis Capaldi's song Grace is a great example of a, an intro that's short and uses chorus material. The intro is a grand total of three measures. So please give your song structure and song form some attention, because it's super important keeping your listener engaged through contrast, tension and release, and delayed gratification. But if you do take creative liberties, just remember to have a good reason or a purpose for doing so. The most important thing at the end of the day is to make sure you're providing contrast as you go from section to section, as this gives your song the tension and release that it needs to be effective. Be sure to look out for part two, where I'm gonna be analyzing a song that breaks almost every rule of the verse-chorus formula, such as having two different choruses and ending the song on a verse, but then I'll show you why it still works. Crazy stuff coming soon, so make sure you subscribe for more. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy the vlogs, the skits, and the piano covers. See you guys soon.